You know, rushing the artistic process is inescapable sometimes, where creative companies call you with a last minute request, or if you want to call it the way it really is, a demand, and in those moments, you may be able to create something amazing. Like that college paper you pulled an all-nighter for and got an A, and you earn every bit of that gig and that paycheck. And that's a gift and a blessing. But even if you're good under pressure, there's something special about the creative process. When we give it more time to breathe and develop, it can help you take an idea and turn it into a masterpiece. This is why great musicians block out entire weeks in the studio and take time to do a deep dive, have time for play, execution, considering new ideas, and to really enjoy that creative process. When artists can take their time and let those ideas germinate, they can give birth to art that speaks powerfully, not only to their fans and to their patrons, but even to the critics. Welcome, I'm Joel Pelsu, President of Arts Entertainment Ministries. We're here to help you as a creative professional to succeed creatively and grow spiritually. Great artists recognize that rushing the creative process isn't a way to create great art. And I know we live in a world that operates at the speed of crazy. I know you feel the pressure on the set when countless people are being paid by the hour and the union fees are not small. You can see the investment accounts just draining as you work. And yes, we've all heard famous quotes from people like Andy Grove, the former president of Intel, who used to say, only the paranoid survive. That's not healthy for your soul. There are times we have to rush to get things done for a client or because of our own deadlines, but we can't let that become the norm. The problem is that rushing your process is bad for your creativity, your relationships, and even your soul. One key illustration of this is the problem in the video game industry probably heard of this, video game developers have finally received pushback in recent years for the practice of what they call crunch. And it's one of the worst practices. People work crazy hours for weeks and weeks and months at a time, sometimes a year, all to get a video game out the door on schedule. Now this is poor planning and bad entry practices that lead to depression, frustration, divorces, broken families, you name it. And I have friends that have experienced this. These companies forget they're hiring humans who need more than a paycheck. They need time to do more than just work and crank things out. Without that, the creative process is pretty much destroyed. They're running on fumes. They can't do their best work. So many of these men and women are like zombies when crunch is over and they return to their loved ones. They have to re-engage and redevelop what has been lost or repair what's been lost during crunch. It's tragic, it's unnecessary, and it should stop. It's really abusing creatives and we should try to stop that. Thankfully, there are companies that are starting new policies and trying to stop crunch, and hopefully they will succeed. Artists who can control the time they have take this very seriously to give room for the process. They make sure they protect their time and the creative process so they can make art that speaks powerfully to their audience. They know how important it is to take care of themselves and their relationships. Now, to be clear, there are amazing artists who have not taken care of their relationships. They are famous or infamous. Tragically, they've turned their art into a kind of a god they worship and sacrificed their relationships on the altar of that god called art. In the end, they may create some powerful works of art, but at what cost? Failed marriages, embittered children, and the list goes on. The damage is all around them. Here at AEM, we want you to succeed in your creative career without sacrificing all the other good things in your life or your spiritual life. And with that in mind, I want to ask you, what about your spiritual life? Do you want to do more than just create great art? Do you also want to be spiritually mature, being patient and kind and loving and faithful and gracious? Well, here's the challenge. Spiritual growth also takes time and intention. Because just like the artistic process, the process of our spiritual growth cannot be rushed. So the real question is this. What can we do to ensure that we are creating our best works of art while continuing to grow spiritually? We want to be holistic and healthy. And here are a few ideas. First, the one thing necessary is slowing down. Freaking out and panicking will kill your creativity and it will starve your soul. So what can you do? Take time to breathe, to reflect on your unique gifting, and then reconnect to your core passion. Creating profoundly moving works of art, film, and other creative projects will require us to take the time to enjoy the process and resist the temptation to rush. We want our audience to slow down and engage with our art, so we need to slow down and create art worth engaging with. Second, know and tell your story. 
you know, don't succumb to the pressure to do what everyone else is doing. Veteran artists usually have a greater ability to do this because they've already struggled with who they are as an artist and figured out who they are. But your gift is found within the story of your life, which God's given you. And this is true for your spiritual life and your creative life. You can't copy the life of another rock star, filmmaker, or painter. And you also can't copy the life of some famous Christian or spiritual giant living today or in history. It just doesn't work that way because you are one of a kind. You're unique. You have unique gifts and unique wounds, unique scars, and a unique story of redemption, what God is doing in your life and through people around you. Again, this may be the very thing necessary to set you apart. And think about this. Artificial intelligence doesn't have a personal story. And artificial intelligence doesn't have a relationship with Jesus. Whatever it produces is secondhand and synthetic at best. It may create stories that sound close to what we're talking about, but it doesn't have a story to tell. And that may be the one thing that sets you apart from everything else that's coming out. When you tell your story, that's something uniquely you that can't be copied and can't be made a synthetic version of. It's your story. One of the most powerful things you have. Third, care for your soul. The more we operate out of anxiety and insecurity, the more we tend to hide our own story and ignore the issues in our life that God wants to address. Trust me, I understand this. When we allow anxiety to creep in, we stop believing that God is with us and that He is actually in control. I'm not sitting here condemning it all. Don't get it that way. We all look for tricks and hacks to save time, get more work done in a shorter amount of time. There's nothing wrong with that intrinsically. But along the way, if we're not careful, we begin to starve our souls and focus solely on efficiency and how much artwork we can produce. But you're not a human production unit. You're a human being made in the image of God. Our heart and our soul cannot be ignored. The longer we ignore the cry of our soul, the more it shrivels and dies. We have to give time and consideration to developing our heart and our soul. We can't run around busy as all get out, trying to get everything done as quick as we can, and thinking that is the point of life. You kill your soul as you get those one or two or three or four or ten extra things done. Fourth, consider the life of Jesus. Over and over we find Jesus taking time away from the crowds and even the disciples to pray and be refreshed in the presence of the Father. He isn't in a hurry. He isn't panicked. He isn't even worried about offending someone by leaving the party. He's not worried about that approval. And if Jesus needed time alone with the Father, how much more do you and I need that time to quiet our hearts, to pray, and spend time with our Father in Heaven? So here are the ways in which Christ modeled a healthy spiritual life. And we need to pay attention. He spent time with God the Father in prayer and fasting. He chose to believe the truth of God's Word. He trusted in God's love for him. He was obedient to God's Word. You see, a healthy spiritual life requires us to follow Christ's example. We won't be able to do it perfectly, of course. We will fail. You will fail. I will fail. Don't think about perfection. Think about the journey. But God promises to forgive us when we repent and seek and start over honoring God. We can't separate our heart and soul from our imagination, and we can't separate our spiritual life from our creative life. It just doesn't work. God created you as a whole, integrated person. Yes, we're given a passion to create, but we're also made for relationships. We're made to take a Sabbath. We're made to enjoy the rhythm of work and rest. We're made to take time to be with God in prayer, in worship, in communion. We can't separate our Christian life from our creative life and expect to be healthy. When we compartmentalize our life, it creates anxiety. It's like we have two separate spinning plates. We've got to keep going back and forth between the two. And God didn't design us to live and create in that state of anxiety, of stress. He wants you to be whole. So there you have it. Follow Christ's model to become more like Christ. What did he do? He spent time with God the Father in prayer and fasting. He chose to believe the truth of God's Word. He trusted in God's love for him. He was obedient to God's Word. And most importantly, we need to spend time with God. He's the only one who can restore your soul and restore the joy of your salvation. And out of that joy, we can bring more of our talents and passions to bear on our heart and our creative process. 
So don't rush the process. Quiet your soul. Learn to sit in God's presence. Trust Him and in His timing. And also trust the creative process. Both of those go hand in hand. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this, you can check out another video I have called How to Find Your Purpose as an Artist. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. And I want to ask you a favor. Can you share down below, what does your process look like? Do you allocate time to play and let ideas germinate? Or are you rushed all the time and wish you could slow down? Need to get some margins? Please tell me in the comments. I'd love to engage with you. As always, thank you for taking time to watch this video. And I encourage you to check out this other video next called How to Find Your Purpose as an Artist. Look forward to seeing your comments and engaging you in the dialogue down below. God bless.